Carlos, ladies and gentlemen, we have the privilege tonight to have you know, the man of the caliber of Father Jack in our midst, the uh, excellent Roisin and his heritage. And I hope you'll give him your best attention and uh, give him every chance. So I'll present you with Father Jack. Thank you very much, Sean, and hello to you all, fathers and sisters and all friends. Now, I remember one time hearing of a parish priest, you know, and um, his curate was all getting caught when he came on like this from the sermon, and I couldn't think of the next thing. And he said to the parish priest, he said, I was to the devil. God says to the parish priest, he says, when I am going to begin to talk, he said, not even the devil knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> Maybe I feel a little bit like I feel a little bit in like that, that man, you know, at the same time, uh, Roisin and his heritage, um, we need to go back a bit. I remember at, at school, preparing to be a priest in Manute, the dean took us to see the president, Ethan Totten, and I was introduced and the president asked me where I was from, and I said, Ahina, and the, the dean jumped in, he was from Sligo or some place, and he said, oh, he said, he never, he never had that test, yeah, some town near it. And I, I was just about to say, McCroom, going to catch it when the president said, oh, he said, Ahina is uh, far to Ireland, there's a parish priest there, isn't it? And um, he proceeded to tell me other things about it. Then in England, uh, Bishop Warlock, who was an Englishman, again, it was the same experience. He asked me, was I from the machine by the Hina? And so... <laughs> so I felt great and I feel proud tonight to say a few words about the Hina, though I'm, I'm quite sure, and this is a... This is, is genuine, it's not a false humility. There are a lot of people who would uh, put it a lot better, I'm sure, but there are some things I, that strike me there was a, that one time he was uh, boasting about his geniality and he met a friend of his and the prince said, how back, far back can you go? He said, I can go back to my great-grandfather. God said, man, he said, I can go back to when old crowds were going crawling up the trees and you know, I'm back to the monkey like. <laughs> and uh, then, I won't go back that far, but a few things I think are of great interest. Right around us here, Kildarhub, not lost, and Delish, there are tombs going back. 4,000 years, and there's no doubt about that. The Bronze Age, and um, the people were buried there. Uh, many people, there were certainly, there was certainly a community and a uh, few communities in this area 4,000 years ago. The Bronze Age was from the year 2000 roughly to 500 BC, and then the weather began to get bad. <laughs> and, much the same yet into this year, but anyway, <laughs> the weather got bad and the climate changed, strange enough. There was a warm climate there so recently ago. There was a very warm climate here in Ireland, and this explains why one finds graves now inside in bogs. It appears certain that these places were not bogs uh, when the people were buried there originally. And moving on then, uh, right up to the time of Christ, uh, there were people here, and uh, didn't know there was, that Christ was after to meet her. <laughs> Margaret liked to, to buy a school and on the parish priest called home the evening, and he said to the parents, he said, so are you a young lad, he knows that, he said. He said, he didn't even know that Christ, Christ died. So he said, laughed at the parish, so we don't hear a bit up here. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, But uh, we, we didn't hear a bit up here at that stage, uh, not from, uh, hundreds of years afterwards. And, uh, in the time of Christ, the, there were two great feasts in this part of the world. One was on the shortest day of the year, and uh, there was a feasting, and uh, relics of it have come down to our own day, that of putting the, you know, the, the basketball cake at the door. There was this warding off of hunger for the year. And then, on the 21st of June, the longest day of the year, there were these big fires. And when Christianity came to Ireland, these pagan feasts 
were made Christian. In other words, I'm talking about our pagan heritage here in Wisconsin being translated into a Christian heritage. We have St. John's well and we have the defiles. We have uh, actually Christmas itself was celebrated on the 21st of December for quite a long time. Then it was settled for the 25th. This then, as I say, is part of our heritage too. After uh, the coming of Christ, uh, of course, we had um, lists and we had rocks and lists and uh, these were simply dwellings and these dwellings came down a very long way towards our own day. They were very predominant in the Middle Ages and after the Middle Ages, places where people lived. In the first period about which I spoke, houses were not that very important for the reason that the weather was so good. But these lists and these rats are all over the place again and we have full of set vehicles and uh, there are a few of them around here and I've seen a few in the parish here and they are simply a way of cooking. I have a story one time of the, the only story to, to someone from around us and to tell someone else, you know, that um, what the dog did, the cat was missing that evening. The dog came into the channel of the stall and he put his tail into the bucket and went out and when he went out in the field, wasn't the cat sucking the dog's tail, but a bit tall. <laughs> uh, very tall, but something like that was two of the philosophy of the really. Because the people had the meat, the meat that they had, the animal they killed, and they hadn't the containers to put the water into them. So they stopped a bit of a stream on both sides, and the water was there, and then the stones were boiled, and the stones were tipped in, tipped in to the water. And so the water boiled, and so the meat boiled. An experiment was done, I'd say it was over 20 years ago now, and, and uh, as far as I know it was around Balaburni by people from the university. And they proved the point very, very clearly that this is what was done. Interesting enough, and giving not jump back, there is uh, the relic of the Stone Age in Clamdrahad, where an implement was found made of stone and it is in the public museum in Cork now. Then Christianity came. The Hatties was around too for a while, I said, and they did not either. But <laughs> we, I think, have been very blessed with uh, the saints that have uh, come around our area. Uh, we were, at that time, right here where we are now, was in the parish of our bullock, and of course our own, our own St. Olin at that time in this site. Finbar, uh, a carbon table in Bolster in the history of Cork, spent some time in here himself. And there are various theories about the uh, relationship of St. Olin and St. Finbar, that they went to Rome together seems very likely. One doesn't have to say much more really about that because I think um, I'm trying to just skip over things because things can get very boring. We St. Baranhoff to court again here and uh, in more recent times where they went on St. too, we uh, St. George. <laughs> Himself that he was to wear the hair long to honor the saints of old. And he was a very brilliant man and, uh, in his own way. But uh, that is, a, in a sense, maybe being a little flippant because our heritage of, of saints, I'm sure, is, you know, immeasurable, un unaccountable now, or uncomfortable, I should say. Because so often the saints is the one that you never know to speak to at all. And, uh, this is how things went along then. We know little enough about the things afterwards as yet. And uh, there was a paracorn in here some years ago, but there was also a paracorn in here in 1470. And there's quite a lot written about that man because there was um, a vicar general in Cork who was meant to be bishop. So the Bishop Jordan there was there at the time, Cork and Klein were one diocese, and he was, uh, sorry, there wasn't at the time now, in 1470 there wasn't, so about 10 years later. But uh, he was meant to be bishop and the, the bishop was fairly shook, Jordan was shook. So he wrote a letter to Rome, he wrote a letter to Rome to say you did. <laughs> and they, they, they wrote back, they wrote back and they made that man the vicar general bishop. That is historical fact. 
Very fast, so many of us are afterwards in Japan, got a bit better than he was even. And there was confusion, and since um, this man, Father Clonin, was had been appointed by the uh, new bishop, with his other comments, he wrote to Rome to ask if he was his um, appointment valid. So I don't know what happened. I know one thing that I took 20 years anyway to get the bishop general, uh, you know, to get him uh, out of the way. And that bishop, <laughs> that bishop uh, was succeeded by blessed Tereus McCarthy. So again, in our heritage, there is, uh, you know, a contact with uh, blessed Tereus McCarthy from West Cork, who was for a while the bishop of the United States of Cork and Ross. <coughs> Moving up to the 1500s, it is clear that the townlands of the Hina area, very many of them, were quite distinguish distinguishable at the time. In 1650, around the down survey time, yes, uh, that's, true, that's true, but even much earlier in the 1500s, uh, you had Derry Rue, you had Crocken Ireland, Kulkisha, you had Cab Rule, you had um, Crown of Britain. You had many others now, and I'm excuse me now because one doesn't have to mention every one of them every time, I think, so you might, may feel a bit let out of it. But in the 1500s, we quite clearly the townlands, the names that we have to this very day. And there's no record of plantations or uh, Bay of Goblin of the, in that century, but it does appear that it was very, very woody. Very woody. And um, our friends from across the water came over and uh, bought the land, took the wood off of it, and sought the land again. That happened in the neighbouring parishes around in the 16th century, that's the 1500s. Uh, in the 1650s itself, we find in, a, in Ahinide a very, very big plantation, wooden plantation. There was the remains of the, uh, you know, the wooded parish that probably existed less than 100 years previous to that. Now, moving on then, uh, there were, McCarthy's were in charge of this part of the country for a few hundred years, in the 1500s and uh, in the 1600s too indeed. And uh, they, of uh, uh, I won't go into it really because I'm not able, but uh, <laughs> there wouldn't be nothing to see enough, like, so the whole family uh, of McCarthy's that owned, uh, and their, their associates that, that owned the land, the whole family, the people like Daly's and the derivation of that name me, me, is that of a doctor or, you know, a medical man. You had Riordan, which was we were dying, the poets of the king. Names like that had, um, they, they, they had a meaning, many of them, even though some of them were simply colours. Uh, this was an introduction in the 12th century when it became law that each one would take a second name. Previous to that, uh, and that's, quite, that's not so long ago, like, in the 12th century, Previous to the 12th century, it was very, very unusual to have a second name. We have, uh, I'm sure Jackie Callan won't mind me saying so, but I knew his father, Jane Sean Owen. And uh, this uh, type of thing was the, was the rule of the day uh, in, in those days. And it's lovely to see that bit of the heritage coming down in the name I've just mentioned, and I'm quite sure that you know many names as well uh, uh, on the same line. Anyway, there was one of the McCarthy's, uh, the whole family that owned the land here, but one of the McCarthy's got a great idea to surrender all the land to the, to the Queen of the King. And they would give all the land to himself customers in back. It was called uh, surrender and regrant, and that's what it was. Uh, take it away from all the land, give it to the Queen, and the Queen said, all for you, boy. <laughs> He, he, was, uh, he was succeeded by a, a Tundi Moab who used to write to the Queen and the letters used to be very um, flattering, you know. And the Queen used to say apparently, when she'd hear that was from McCarthy, she used to say, more of the blarney, more of the blarney. And that's where the term came from, around 1600, blarney. You know, a talk that may be true, but it may not. Uh, usually a bit of a mixture. But well sweetened. <laughs> anyway, uh, towards the end of the 17th century, uh, in, in, in uh, about 1690s, McCarthy got fired and it was the last confiscation of land by the English 
in our own parish. And in 1704, the land was put up for sale. Our parish was up for sale. Many people were at, well, the, the general announcement was, and it wasn't very serious probably, that anyone would claim should have been in before a certain date in 1700. Now, the man by the name of Wilkinson put in a claim for a uh, crop and yield and got it. A uh, man by the name of, um, written his name, I can't, is it? The carpet rule, anyway, another man put in a claim for that and, uh, uh, he, yeah, um, Portal, Portal. He, he got it again. A man by the name of Rayardon, and this is a very strange coincidence, put in a claim for Derry Rue and didn't get it. Now, it's quite possible that the other two people were, were, were Protestants, you know, and we're talking more about politics now than about religion, really, and I think that is something that should be made very clear as well. We're not talking about the religion, we're just talking the very fact that they were English, uh, Probably meant that they uh, also had the Protestant religion. Anyway, the, the rest of the parish was for sale, and uh, the hollow sword blade, a company in England, bought the parish. In turn, and in time, and in turn, they gave it out to the landlord, whom we all know, like Sir Mr. Cooper and Mr. Woodley, all this. And up in the 89th century, there was the land purchase tax, and we have the people who are there to this very day. Back in 1821, there are people that we still recognize as uh, holding land in our parish, the Ambroses, that's 130 acres of land in Carveroo, uh, Tumis of Inchilia, and uh, many others like that had land, uh, but the, the land wasn't really owned until you know, at the end of the last century. And I thought, in a sense, that's nearly enough about uh, the land and so on. The, the important thing then, as regards our own uh, school, I think, and I, I won't be able to this for much longer, as I am, you can either go to sleep or uh, I'll take a walk out. But um, in the that was the Education Act, National School uh, Education Act was passed, and resulting from that, it claimed that we had the best education system in the world. The English Education Act didn't come for the most of 20 years later. Uh, there was a lot of hassling this way and that way and the other way. Indeed, there was. But uh, that is something that we have, you know, uh, in our heritage as well. Something for which we are grateful, even though it took us uh, 50 years ourselves to get a school right here. Uh, it started off in 1851. We had, of course, uh, our own options about the parish, and I feel myself that this is one of the reasons, maybe, that Ahina didn't figure as strongly in GA as did our neighbouring parishes of Ahabolog and Clondroid. Um, Ahina men certainly played with Ahabolog, and in 1890, both Clondroid and uh, Ahabolog, they won uh, very important cups here in all parts of the country. We were a very young parish. We were a parish getting over, from, getting over scars. Nationalism was something from the 1850s on that was uh, catching on. It was getting people together uh, for nationalistic reasons, and it, it's hard for us to understand that prior to 1850 there, was, there wasn't really nationalism. That was much more broken up. Here as the country were moving together, things were getting Irish, Irish games and so forth were coming along. We had tellers who played, as I say, with our bullock, and, uh, you know, with others as well at different times. And with some two who later on in the time played with Candlehead. Uh, the Apollo uh, Pollers actually, they won this cup about which I spoke, they won it bare for it. No more wearing well shoes. That was in 1890. We are still a young parish. We're a parish being knitted together, and I think we're unique in that respect. I don't know any parishes that have been carved and, and uh, sort of uh, uh, put together by plaster parish again, where the, the bones sort of uh, uh, grow together and heal, and uh, where the whole organism is, is fully alive, fully vital, and fully healthy. And uh, that is the wonderful thing about um, the machine of 1984. It's wonderful. 
I went home last night with the book listen to nearly four o'clock, and I read it from cover to cover. So I'm getting busy in scattered at this day, so I don't take too much notice of me. But anyway, um, I, I'd like to move to another uh, area then. We have, of course, our population. Uh, variations are amazing. In the page 24 of the book there I, not I noticed last night, 11 town lands mentioned there in the Rusheen area. In 1841, there were 11,120 people. In 1891, around the time of the school, there were 672, I think. And today there are 250. Well, one thing is certain with the quality today. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> And that's, that's, that's our plan, you know. Uh, uh. <laughs> I think the way people lived in the last century, I take the last century because it's, uh, it's a little uh, people into the past. The way people lived, uh, what they have passed on to us is very much now uh, what is uh, so important about territory. What I set up now is very much a background. But what I'm going to say now, hopefully, will have uh, will be heritage specifically, what the people have passed on to us. There have always been people called coming to our parish and people leaving and so forth and you know it's great the way that uh, the contribution that's made in so many different ways. And uh, we have a celebration now and it's so apt that we make up for what didn't happen a hundred years ago when the teacher from Tavrul went down with his key and opened the door below. I mean that. And uh, there was a lot to be said for it. But like I often have my father saying about the young bull and the, the old bull down down the mountain. And the old bull said, what, what mountain will you go next? That's the young bull said that. And the old bull said, look, so this one first. And before the mountain was down anywhere, the poor young bull, he died. <laughs> so there wasn't anything really done apart from the building set up in 1884. In 1984, we're celebrating. We're celebrating something wonderful that has happened. People gone all over the world. A really letter there last night in the magazine. One lady says she's gone around the world four times at least. And it is because of our Christian conviction she's done it moreover. A past pupil of Rasheen School. There's another thing about Rasheen School that uh, is very, very important to me. It's a stabilizing factor. It's there. It's something, it, it doesn't move. It didn't move with the last hundred years anyway. <laughs> and there are so many things about today which are moving. Things are moving. Everything is moving. God forgive me, we are moving. <laughs> and things are moving the news and uh, this, so, things are so unstable. It is grand to come back because it is, it is the building is bringing us back. We are going around, thing, around it. Without you, of course, the building would mean nothing. But it's you know, it's a pole down there, uh, stuck deep in the ground. It's our uh, stand of it, like. And it's great. In the last hundred years, um, uh, talking about celebration, uh, it may be another reason why there wasn't a celebration at the beginning. Celebration surrounded birth, marriages, and, and even death. I remember the same Mr. Waller saying to me, of an Irish wake, he said, uh, he had the Venaris week, he said, and uh, everything was going on, he said, until one of the chief mourners turned her ankle and he cast a gloom on the whole proceeding. <laughs> it, is, it is in a sort of way, uh, uh, you know, a little summy up of many of the funerals that took place. And, I don't know, I have to go into this because you know it yourself. Uh, you've heard it yourself from the different times and often the cops will be inside in bed and the bit of the back of the office and the stomach, not the, of the, um, whatever you sneak. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> then, uh, this, was, this was the way in. The, actually, many of the pagan customs, about which I spoke at the start, many of the pagan customs are still hanging on. And many of them, were put into action and put into force at, at especially uh, weeks. It is something, uh, I hope to say something about in a minute, something about education. 
education was needed to come to grips with it. We were steeped in superstition even in the last century. We were prisoners of it. We weren't free. And in many ways, I think, um, even as Catholics, in many ways we weren't fair enough. I, I, I don't want to take this too far now. In many ways we were, but there were ways as well in which we were, you know, held down very much and we were afraid. There was fear. Then there were the weddings. And again, I think education has done an awful lot for us and in the freedom again that we have. Freedom that we have in uh, choosing a partner. And um, this freedom wasn't there before for, for, for very basic reasons, because of the very basic needs, ec economic reasons. And in the last century there were some dire situations, very difficult situations, where, for instance, two very genuine parents would feel that a girl wouldn't have a chance of getting married because of some physical defects or something like that. And there are cases, and I feel I would no, four or five certain cases where, you know, the match was made with the lively one. And uh, the morning of the wedding, the other one was chucked out. <laughs> but that many morning there was no electricity. And in those days you didn't stop to go wincy at each other at the art. So there were cases of that indeed, and I think it's important to see the reason that very often the dire necessity that drove uh, uh, parents to that. I know, I had the one case and I said, maybe your man, maybe his IQ wasn't the highest one, but when it happened, he went back to the wrong system. He went back to the parents of the girls and he said, give out that, and he said, I'll give you one warning. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> so, <laughs> in another case, there was the case where a man and uh, he was uh, somewhat related to myself, and he um, he was met with this woman, and uh, he was married off to a woman that was blind. And God knows it was he had much very said in the voice of it. But it happened. We can laugh at it now, and there's no harm in laughing. No harm indeed. But I think it does give us again, uh, you know, about our view into our past. And uh, it helps us to thank God for what we have. To thank God for what these people did for us to enable us to be as free as we are this day. You know, despite all the blight and the blackness, there's an awful lot of goodness. There's an awful lot of scope to be joyful. It is great to be alive. And there's no doubt about that. You also had it <coughs> with the baptisms, but maybe not to such a great extent, because the baptism had, you know, the baptism took place as quickly as possible. You could be singing as you waiting after that polite. And there are other things as well that strike me, and one of the very valuable things about our heritage in this parish of the, is, the, is the wisdom that has been passed on in stories. Uh, I remember Mrs. Dunley telling us about the boy that went to the shop, and uh, you know the big jar of the sweets, and the ball, the neck is a bit narrow. And the boy went up anyway, and, uh, or maybe went down, I know his stuff you know. But, uh, <laughs> But anyway, anyway, he, the shopkeeper was very kind and she said, you can take a sweet. So he took a system. And of course the hand couldn't come up. <laughs> and the shopkeeper, the teacher lesson said, no sweet now, no sweet now. So that made a deep impression on me, a very simple story. I remember again, Master Welch, who taught us many things soon did, and uh, he, <laughs> he, uh, He's telling us about the, the lazy man, to the model in, 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 you know, the evils of laziness, you know. And this man, he was sitting the potatoes, and I've told the story a couple of times before, but from that man I got the story at school. Uh, he was a very lazy man, and um, the neighbors were surprised that he ever sort of got around to sit in the potatoes at all. Like. And they were a bit surprised that he did nothing with them until it came to digging time. And when he was Digging the potatoes anyway, they were very small, white queen, the kinds of things. <laughs> and the neighbours said to me, he said, Johnny, they were having the potatoes. Well, he said, it was like this. 
I left them to God, and God left them to me, and between the two of us, they went to the deep <laughs> It's also telling us another story about people, uh, uh, people who had a nickname called Shopping, and uh, they were from the, not from our own parish indeed, but uh, the Shopping, of course, in Irish is, uh, um, is, as I hope I'm right, is, uh, what though? Be careful. Be careful. And what the origin of the story, and the reason the people were called Shoppings, and uh, uh, supposedly anyway, is that the, the wife died, and they were surely around the church. Because uh, uh, the western half of our diocese, or the western end of it, and uh, they were around the church anyway, and didn't the cost and the corner of the church. You want more up inside. And uh, they went home anyway, and uh, she was alright, she wasn't too bad. But, <laughs> She died about a month after. She died right. And um, they were... They were going... They were going to... The, the funeral was taking place again. And just as they were going on to church, you man gave a roar. He said, shock in the going here, shock in the going here. Watch the comments for that thing. Sorry, the time is, uh, is quickly way between. And there were other stories as well. There were many, many stories from people in the parish indeed. There was one old man here. Uh, he was uh, about 90 years before he died. And uh, he, he was a great man indeed uh, from our own community. And um, the one thing, all right, like he, he did think that another man was a bit curious. And what he was right around didn't make any difference anyway. And this man, as I say, was over 90. And he, 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 was, he got no shit dying like. And um, the man that he thought was curious called the same, and he said to, your man, I'll anyway, use a fictitious name, he said, uh, then he said, uh, how are you? That's the Dan, I ended with three days. <laughs> and your man said to him, and he said, how are you on the other side? Well, he said, I tell you the truth, every one of them is mine, he's on business. <laughs> A certain philosophy in these stories, a certain insight into the people. The people were, in a sense, they were, in a sense, uh, somewhat, um, you know, uh, how to say, a bit wary of what people would think, you know. They would mind their own business very well. I know of another uh, man of old in the area, and uh, he saw the pigs, and his neighbor asked him, how much did you get? And he said, guess. And he said, uh, guess again, he said. And then he said, guess again. And then he said, you were right one. Of that, you know, and the man about whom I was speaking now, he did with many years indeed, but his father, before him, he was a very clever man indeed, and uh, the time of paying the rent to make an impression on the landlord, what he do, he take off his shoe, two shoes and on, well he probably had any sockets, but he run around it, and this day didn't want the neighbours meet him, which, with the result that the barefooted rent paying man was very embarrassed. And the neighbour said to me, he said, uh, uh, again, a fictitious name. Then he said, who made those shoes for you? Came to one, he said, you'll never see him anyway. He said, of course. Of course, he was referring to the legs like that. He wouldn't see God, so God made the legs. But, uh, <laughs> I, I better finish off because uh, the, 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 we have a bone for the like it, like, you know? And uh, a few little things I would like to say before finishing. Uh, one is that what education has done for us, to my mind. Or we are very much inclined to think of the past, and I would say, well, with nostalgia indeed, and being sentimental, and there's some beautiful things done. But some beautiful things have taken that place too, I believe. I've reached out to some. Superstition. Superstition was frightening in many respects, and I um, honestly believe myself that superstition uh, was at the level of black magic in certain situations. There was a hate existed at times in the past that 
one finds in, you know, pagan places. I've heard the priest go out to Africa and laughing at the, some Africans who uh, try to walk this uh, black magic and then having to swallow their water when they see the power. I believe too that in many of this, these patrols that were walked, that there was, there was real power behind them. It was it, a, something, uh, something evil. And thanks to the God, our education has helped a lot in doing away with that type of, well it's a form of, I don't mean it in the bad sense, but it's a form of evil. It has done away with that. Something else it has done away with is the, the hate about which I speak. Uh, it's quite consistent for people to go to mass. Yeah, everything then. Would not talk to a neighbour for a lifetime. I remember coming across a lady one time she said she was down there, she was sitting down there for two months for fear they'd have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, the fight consisted to be a good Catholic, it appeared. And this didn't seem to matter. Thanks be to God again that this grudge that went on from generation to generation, sometimes the grudge was kept up and most often was kept up a lot longer than anyone could remember what the reason for it was. Then the, the, there was cast ascension too that had to be fixed. Again, thanks be to God. There is the respect and the equality in the community. That is, it's like a different part of the body. And I see here in Rishi, it's inevitable that at times there'll be bits of things. But we'll have to swallow our pride and realize that we have a part to play. And there in the film today there was Homo Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is there giving each of us his part to play. Because we do belong together. No man, no woman is enough. Not only that, but we're more closely related to each other than blood brothers and sisters. There's no doubt about that. The little child may be two months old when he or she will say he knows when he bites his toe and gets a normal fright, realizing for the first time that the toe belongs to himself. Correct. <laughs> it's in this way we belong. And some people will get some jobs to do, some people will get limelight, there'll be another time for someone else. There may not be. God has his way of doing things. And as far as to try to be as positive as we can. Because of the wonderful heritage we have. So that we may pass it on to those coming after us. We are a little like the wild bees. They fly along. <coughs> and there's one in front and he, or she again, uh, is about six inches in front of the others who fly like this. And he breaks the, 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 the wind for the others who are far. When he gets tired, he just falls back in line and someone else goes out in front. And when one gets sick, two others go down with him. And the others go along. And then the other three fall. There's a model there, I think, from nature itself again. There will be times that we'll feel a bit let down, and this is about my third last sentence. But it does remind me of this man, he was back, uh, in the back of the West here anyway, and he ran out of work. In the old days. And he did he go to England. And he walked as far as cock and he came to his son and visited the way it's over. He was trying to make the story a bit better at first. But he went over anywhere and he got a job and he was doing very well. So he got stopped as a bit low on some life and he was going out to social. And this night he was dancing with a colored girl who was more black than colored actually. And uh, <laughs> she liked her indeed. She was a lovely girl. Lovely girl. But she said, she said, will you walk me home, Patty? She said, or Johnny, whatever his name was. Oh, he said, I, I walked from Kilani. He said, my swami visit the way it's over. And I said, no, no, I should walk you to Africa. <laughs> we have our stability then. We have our heritage and just with that uh, uh, phrase of, or a uh, saying of John F. Kennedy, think not, think not what your parish can do for you, but what you can do for your parish. 
Y hay que jugar en los colores. Thank <laughs> you. 
too popular with the man. We wish for a song from Father Pat Connell. <laughs> Which, uh, which probably you heard it, uh, just kind of coming all around the air all the week here, the Rotary Sheen. I don't know that song, but I know one with the same air, right? The thank you so long, that might be appropriate. If you forgive me, these are my notes. <laughs> <laughs> it was early on a bright summer's morning, I strolled by the banks of the lawn. To hear the birds sing most come As I gazed o'er each woodland and lawn My prospects were surely enchanted With gay lassies in juvenile bloom Perambulating on the of that river That flows through the town of and fond of recreation by that river I chanced far to roam and all in a while meditating I sat myself down on a stone I sat for a while contemplating until Saul his bright rays hath withdrawn then a damsel of comely appearance came down by the banks of Salon we talked and we walked on together inhaling the fine pleasant air till at length we came to a mansion she said sir my father lives there where he ruler of france or of russia it is with you i would wear the crown and i'd bind you in wedlock my darling you're the beauty of sweet massy town but now i've returned from my roamings with a heart full of sorrow and grief there is no one on earth can console me or give me the slightest relief i will roam through the african desert until death will bring me to my tomb for the sake of that lovely young helen that i met near the town of mccroom chenoville go for the car there thank you dan <laughs> on the ground there i'm walking on <laughs> Uh, there's a song here that I haven't sung it for a few years, but I probably have forgotten the most of it. It was about um, the carrier recruit, right? Have you heard this? About six months ago, I was digging the land with me brogues in me feet and me spade in me hand. And says I to myself, what a pity to see such a fine strapping lad cutting turf in trolley with my carry I O carry I O right fall the dull day carry I O right fall the dull day the chorus is very easy now we sped through the air with the greatest of ease like daring young men in our flying trapeze then my heart nearly stopped when I thought for a while we'd get a queer jolt if we ran out of oil with my carry I O right fall the dull day carry I O right fall the dull day when we got to Katanga we landed quite sound I was thanking the Lord to be back on the ground then this queer hawk came up shouting me babutu 
often says I, and the same, sir, to you, with my carry I o right fall the doll day. Carry I o right fall the doll day. Then up came La Mamba, a man of great fame. He asked me my country, and I told him my name. I told him before, and I'll tell him again, that my father and mother were to carry men at my carry I O right fall the doll day. Carry I O right fall the doll day. When my six months are up, and I hope it isn't ten, I'll strike back for Tralee and dig praties again. I'll buckle my brogues and shake hands with my spade and schlonbio to dag hammer shells Irish brigade with my carry I O right fall the doll day carry I O right fall the doll day Thank you and over to the master seminaries. The Master Seminaries, who reminds me of my friend the Undertaker. Where is it? <laughs> now look here, Omi, I can't see many volunteers for singing. I'll have to pick up one myself. I think we should stay with the clergy and um, Father Fitzgerald is just ducking behind someone else. <laughs> Come on, Father. Come on, give me a big round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not wearing my wedding, my, I was going to say my wedding garment, my, my, <laughs> my garment. <laughs> Sorry. But I'm wearing a pioneer pin, dress as good as any. <laughs> Well, now I'll sing, um, what I sing, I wonder? Uh, Eileen O'Grady, so if you'll all join in the chorus. There's a sweet little lady called Eileen O'Grady, and I long for to call her my own. Sure, I won't be contented till she has consented to be Miss Miss Bonnie Malone. I first met this treasure while walking at leisure along on a bright summer's day it was out the near warning the top of the morning i just said to her right away everybody come come beautiful eileen out for a drive with me over the mountain down by the fountain home through the valley show sure won't it be lovely don't be unkind Make up your mind and we'll drive to Castle Bar. To the road, I'm no stranger for you, there's no danger. So hop, cupboard on the old jumping car. When at last she consented, I felt quite contented. For me, it was a moment of bliss. And we drove to Killarney without any blarney. From Eileen, I swore that sweet kiss. We both sat together like birds of a feather. She whispered, I'll tell you what she said. Ah, she promised me, Garai, to share joy and sorrow. And to her I sing when we wed everybody. Come, come, beautiful Eileen, out for a drive with me. Over the mountain, down by the fountain, home through the valley, sure won't it be lovely? Don't be unkind, make up your mind, and we'll drive to Castle Bar. To the road, I'm no stranger for you, there's no danger, so hop, cupboard on the old jaunting car. Thanks very much. Do I go in or do I? Yeah. Um, let me see, you know, what do you think? Um. Now you ask me to sing you a bit of a song. Tis not very short and tis not very long. Now you ask me to sing about something that's new. And be that now, says I, I don't mind if I do. Turalo. 
And with that now says I, I don't mind if I do. Well, my name is Dan Murphy, and a farmer am I. I courted a lass, and I felt rather shy. She invited me in for a moment or two. And be dead now, says I, I don't mind if I do. Tooraloo, tooralay. And be dead now, says I, I don't mind if I do. When we entered the kitchen, it was cosy and bright. A fine hearty supper we put out of sight. Says she, would you care for a glass or two? And be dead now, says I, I don't mind if I do. Tooraloo. To rally. And be dad now says I, I don't mind if I do. When the supper was finished, I reached for me hat. Said Peggy, the darling, don't leave me like that. Says she, would you care for a kiss or two? And be dad now says I, I don't mind if I do. To rally. To rally. And be dad now says I, I don't mind if I do. I can't give any more. Thanks very much. <laughs> very much, Father. <laughs> now, as I was listening to the radio during the week, I heard a very beautiful voice. I think it was that of Mrs. Mary Preston. I think she's here somewhere. Come on out if you're here. Don't be shy. We only want a few bears. Is she? All right. This doesn't work, does it? What do you know? Okay. All right. She lives beside the Anorat, the foot of Slivnaman. A gentle Irish Carleen, with fair eyes like the dawn. Her lips were dewy rosebuds and her teeth were pearls rare. And a snowdrift neath her beechen brow, her neck and not brown hair. How pleasant was to see her when the Sunday when the bell was filling with its mellow tones, lone wood and grassy dell. And when at eve young maidens on the river strolled along, the widow's brown-haired daughter was the loveliest of the throng. Oh, brave, brave Irish girl, sure we well may call you brave, but the least of all your pearls is...